Hey friends, welcome back to Bible Song of the Duns. Tonight, we read Joel chapter 3, and we finished the book of Joel. Let's jump right in. Let's jump right in. Okay, so take the book of Joel and take it now from maybe, possibly, three scenes in life. So maybe you've got, in chapter 1, you've got the description of a of a locust invasion that probably had already happened so they knew that they saw that they they were part of that maybe they they had stories about it. they either saw it with their own eyes or they knew about it from a recent moment so so you've kind of got that in the past then chapter two maybe looking ahead to uh maybe looking ahead to this idea that you know, if you thought the locusts were bad in chapter one, there's going to come another moment. And maybe this is about an army. Okay. And so, and so all throughout the book, we're talking about, this is the day of the Lord. So the day of the Lord is coming and there are going to be moments. Then you're going to think they're the worst. They're the, this is the baddest of the bad. It can't get much worse than this. He says, but if you are not right with God, there is going to be a moment that caps all other moments where this is the worst it can get. For instance, put yourself in a situation of you do not know the Lord. The Lord comes to establish his kingdom on the earth, which we believe he's going to do. He's going to come back and you're not right with him. In that moment, there's going to be a moment where the Lord takes over. He's not coming to take sides. He's coming to take over. And when that happens, where however it is you've chosen to live your life, you're now going to live your eternity. So if you have chosen to live your life uh, far and distant from God, keeping him at arm's length where he is not Lord, where he is not invited, then you get to spend an eternity separated from God. But the other side is if you have, if you have become a follower of God, now we understand through faith in Jesus then that makes the day of the day of the Lord a day not of not of worry and not of fretting and not of danger and not of anxiety but now it's a day of rejoicing because all the wrath that we did deserve now we're not going to get why because the wrath of God was poured out on Christ at the cross this is where we get uh, where Jesus is talking to us in John chapter 5 verse 24 he says this he says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me, well, listen to this, has everlasting life. Who heard my word and believed in him who sent me has everlasting life. Now notice this and put it in to context with what Joel is warning about in the, with the day of the Lord. He says this, Jesus says, and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death to unto life. So the day of the Lord is a terrible, dreadful, horrible day for those who do not know God. But on the other hand, it is a, it's a, it's a day where daddy comes home for his, uh, for his children and the groom comes for his bride. That's a joyous day. And it says the bridegroom rejoices when, uh, or the, you know, the, the bridegroom's friend rejoice when they hear his voice. And so there, it is possible for some to be, it'd be the worst day ever, and some to be the best, but it depends on whether or not we know Jesus as our Savior. Now, in chapter 3, we're looking ahead even further. So you got locusts, then you may have armies in chapter 2, and in chapter 3, this lets us know this is even bigger than all, because now we're going to the end times. So in the end times, it, chapter three, after constant enemies of the Lord are, are, are kind of have always been, at, you know, at his people. Think of Paul, uh, Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus where Jesus appears to him and he says, he says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul said, uh, who are you, Lord? And he says, I am Jesus who you are persecuting. So in that moment, Jesus is not just identifying himself as, I'm alive, by the way, the rumors you heard are true, but now he's also saying that Jesus identifies himself with his people so that their suffering is his suffering and that he cares and he is taking it himself, okay? So now in chapter three, the nation of Israel has been just kind of ripped apart by these other nations and God said, okay, you want to fight? Let's fight. He said, so gather all your good boys, all your stuff, all your stuff, all your army. You gather everything you think you got and come to me. And by the way, he mentions a place. So in chapter number two, he calls it the Valley of Jehoshaphat. 
In chapter 12, he said, or in verse 12, he says, and let the nations be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. That means the valley the Lord judges. And by the way, this is probably a reference to what we would read, uh, we would read in Hebrew, uh, which is called Megiddo. And, yeah. and it's called, and in Hebrew, we would pronounce it, we would pronounce it Har Megiddo, which is where you would get Har Megiddo, Har Armageddon. So he says, you want to fight? Let's fight. But guess who's going to win that battle? Now, this could also be, this could also be uh, some of Jesus' end time stuff. So in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus is talking with his disciples and they're asking him about the end times. And Jesus is giving them bits and pieces of information. And in verse 31, he says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. And all the nations will be gathered unto him, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left. So all the nations are going to gather and he's going to go, okay, now let's decide who the sheep are and who the goats are. Because the sheep have a shepherd and the goats, they're going to be the bad guys. And he separates the two. So, verse number 12, let the nations be wakened and come up. And in verse number 14, he says, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Well, what's the decision? Are they sheep or are they goats? Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. So the day of the Lord is going to be destruction on God's enemies, but then it's going to be blessing and deliverance for his people. Which, by the way, in judgment, we would look at this and go, on judgment day, which, by the way, it's appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. On the judgment day, I will bring to him none of my good works. All my good works are filthy rags, rags, right? So I come to him not on the basis of my accomplishments, but I come to him missing his wrath because it's already been poured out on Jesus and I've been covered in the shed blood of the lamb as the Passover lamb covered the door frame in Egypt. Now wrath passes over me. Why? Because I'm covered in the blood of the lamb. Now, what'd you get out of this, Mama? My very favorite, and I know you all will be shocked, is verses 17 on. Um, the good news of this, all of this, and a lot of the prophets, mention this phrase verse 17 says so you shall know that i'm the lord your god all of this isn't because god is mean it's not because god is cruel in fact it's the opposite all of this is because he wants his people to know that they know that he is the one true god in a world full of all these kinds of false gods and demons and trickery and farce um he wants us to know that he is the one true God. He wants us to have relationship with him. So chapters one, two, three, whether it was a future um, thing that happened or something to come in discipline and in, in order to get the, the attention of God's people, this is the goal so that we will know that God is the one true God. He is Yahweh. And then all this beautiful stuff after it. Our goal is fellowship with him, restoration in our relationship with him. And through that, just like Tara Lee Cobble says, he's where the joy is. That's where all the good comes from. All of our future hope, that's the point. I agree. I agree. All of this, it's its really like, it, he says, he says, not only are the wicked going to be judged, he says, but my people, I'm going to make their, I'm going to make their home Almost, the way he describes it almost sounds like Eden would be mm -hmm. described, okay? But then, notice, but then notice verse 20. But Judah shall abide for how long? Forever. Forever. And Jerusalem from generation to generation. So God's plans for his people of grace and mercy are for how long? Forever. Forever. Listen, the word we would use for that? Eternally, okay? And so eternal life and eternal forgiveness are offered. This is why the warnings happen. The warnings aren't, again, because God is mean. It's because God is good and he says, this doesn't have to be you. Come to me, come to me, come to me. This, this is what Joel is preaching, all right? We hope you've enjoyed this book. We'll catch you tomorrow and we'll start a new book, all right? Bye. Bye.